We're going to go back to basics here and say, hey everyone, welcome to another Goody Reader video. That's harking back to something we used to start our videos 10 years ago with. But hey everyone, here we are either way. We have Android versus Linux. You saw it in the title, you saw it on the display picture. What is it all about? We are going to show you. Now, please note, this is going to be a video approaching this from an average consumer standpoint. For example, we are not going to do any jailbreaking, we are not going to do any coding, we are not going to do anything with the BIOS or anything overly technical. We are just going to approach this from the standpoint of going to a store or going to an online e-commerce platform, purchasing a product, receiving said product, opening it up, and using it. That is what the average person is going to be using this for. On the left, we have Android. It doesn't matter that this is an Onyx. On the right, we have Linux. It doesn't matter that this is a pocketbook and we will be throwing in Amazon there every once in a while. The biggest difference we can say right out of the gates is that Android has less character than Linux. So when you have something like Android, everything's just going to be here are your apps, here's your drop down, you have your settings menu down below, and that's basically it. It's very normal. It's very craft your own experience. The reason Linux devices have a greater personality, call it, is because you can't change your experience. You can't sideload things in. You can't alter any part of this whatsoever. And a few examples are as follows. If you go to your Android device, you have your apps. If you long press something, you can uninstall it. If you go to Google Play, you have millions upon millions upon millions of applications, browsers, lifestyle programs, anything you want. Also, on Android devices, more often than not, you have speed modes. You have a lot more functionality and customization to change your overall experience. You can download your social media. You can download YouTube and Netflix and Tiver and browsers and Duolingo and Outlook and Gmail and Google Drive and anything you want. Furthermore, you can download things off of Google Play that have different ecosystems, which we'll touch on in a second, like Google Play Books. But when you have a pocketbook, for example, you only have the pocketbook store. That is it. If there is something on this store that you don't like, you can't sideload any other store. Here's a dead half-half left and right example store versus store we have an android store here adventures of tom sawyer all right the pharmacist great you know what i'm tired of this store i want to use a different store game over that is absolutely it here's an android experience you know what i'm tired of this store oh that's okay you can just go to google play and from there i can download amazon i can download barnes and noble i can download kobo rakuten i can download third party i can go and go to my Google Play books, in which case I can search for literally anything and get millions of titles right on my device, right out of the gates. That is it with no downfall. There's no downsides, doesn't come at a detriment to the unit itself. And the selection is plentiful to the nth degree. You have too much content. You could not consume the amount of content on here before you pass. This one, you could probably hit the end. Now, the same thing holds true with Amazon. This isn't a dig at Pocketbook. Pocketbook does a tremendous job at delivering a very simplistic, streamlined experience. But Amazon is much the same way. For example, if we go to the store, it'll update the store experience, takes a second, and now we have whatever is on the Amazon store. But that is it. If I would like to venture outside of the Amazon store, I have no other avenues. There is nothing else I can do. I can sideload books in via the USB cable, but I can do that on this. That does not matter if you're using Linux, it doesn't matter if you're using a device that doesn't even have an operating system. This is a lot more flexible. For example, if I want all of my books from Amazon, these ones right here, but I don't feel like using this particular device, I can go to the Google Play Store, I can go to the search bar, type in Amazon Kindle, and I can download Amazon Kindle and Audible. And what that does is allows me to get all of this and this on here without using this. I bypass Amazon and your phone can do this. Your Samsung phone, your Sony phone, your Fujitsu Arrows phone can all do this 
on any device. I don't have to use this device to get this experience. Same with the pocketbook. I don't necessarily have to use the pocketbook. I can download pocketbook on this. So what the downside is with Linux is that the overall lack of function is exponentially lower than an Android. Here's another example. If I swipe the top down, I see I have things like AI Assistant, E-Ink Center, Freemark, Quick Notes, Sticky Notes, Screen Recorder. I have a lot of things I can have on there. And you might say, well, you know what? I want those on here. I'd like a calculator. I'd like all that stuff. Certain manufacturers, like Pocketbook, will have you covered with certain things. Calculator, calendar, dictionary, gallery, different library services, photo frames. Cool. I even have Chess and Klondike and stuff like that. However, not all of them will. For example, the Kindle has no games. If I go to the settings menu, that's it. I don't have any games at all. I can't even play Chess if I wanted to. At least on here I could. I could play an N64 emulator of Chess 3D on this unit. I can't do it on this. This is the way it is meant from Pocketbook. It is crafted this way. Furthermore, if I don't like something, I can't long press on chess and delete it. I can add it to the home screen, but that's it. Here, as we showed you at the top of the hour, you can uninstall anything you don't like. I can put in Google Chrome on here and have all of my tabs and my search history and my autofill for my credit card payments on this unit. I can't do any of that on either of these two units. And this isn't just speaking for Amazon and Pocketbook directly. This is speaking for everything. Now there is a downside when it comes to Android and how plentiful these features are. You will run into a lot of kind of slowdowns on an Android device. Because it's trying to do too much, at times you could get carried away. You can download something that's too heavy from the App Store. You can maybe try to push it further than it's able to go. Not only that, the battery drain is significantly higher and more demanding on an Android device. There's more background processes required to get the job done. But we don't experience that on Linux-based devices. Because this doesn't have audio playback right out of the device, there's no speakers, you have to use different things like Bluetooth and dongles. Because this doesn't have speed modes, because it doesn't have multimedia playback, there's far less demand on this, which is why you see devices like Pocketbook that have as low as 512 MB RAM, but Android devices have as much as 8 gigs of RAM, because that is what is required of them in order to function. On a Linux-based approach, you will have less demand on the device itself, the battery, and furthermore, nothing really crashes. Now, I will note that we had a great deal of issues with the Kindle Paperwhite 1 and 2 when it came to something as simple as PDFs, but that has since been corrected long time ago, generations ago. The Kindle has stabilized, the pocketbook has stabilized, and they have cemented themselves as some of the best simplistic, streamlined, easy to use units. However, Android can get a little bit complicated because when you go to the settings menu and you go to the top menu, you are greeted with a few things you can do to switch it up. However, on Android, it actually could get overwhelming at times because there is just so much you can do with changing your experience. There's things like servers and accounts and screen augmentation. Not only that, with this new line of units with speed modes, you have refresh modes, you have more, which you can do drag to refresh, full refresh by tap count, animation filter, and furthermore, you can do that on different things like anti-flicker and whatnot. And you have color correction, dark color enhancement, color filters. There's a whole bunch of things that could really get overwhelming 
for a first time user, someone that is looking for something more simplistic on an Android device. However, these are very simple. When you click the top, there's only four things. There's a brightness dial for the glow light, and then there's all settings. Settings only has about eight odd things, and when you go to one thing, it's very simplistic and streamlined. There's not really a whole lot that you can customize, and that's by design. In fact, this is a color unit by Amazon, and the only thing they allow you to change is the vivid controls. You can go to color style, vivid, or standard, and that's it. And this is the simplest color device in the entire industry currently. You just have two different modes. They really didn't want all those dials and slider bars. And unfortunately, if you are thinking that, well, maybe one or the other is cheaper than the other, that is not the case. We have seen very cheap Linux-based devices as low as $89 and very expensive Linux-based devices as high as $480. Same with Onyx devices, same with BigMe, same with HiRead, same with iReader. There are cheaper devices that run Android that are in the lower echelon and there are extremely expensive devices. You Using Android. Granted, in the e-reader world, there are more variety of devices using Android, like the latest high-read gaze line of things and all the stuff by just countless manufacturers using Android. So you do have a wider spread of prices. But when it comes down to it, Linux is simpler to use. It's easier to get a handle on. It's just more of a dedicated one trick pony utilitarian approach. You get this, you buy it, you click on something, you read, that's it. There's not a whole lot of functionality on this. It is heavily limited in functionality by design. They didn't say, oh, whoops, we didn't put Google Play on this. That wasn't their intention. They didn't make this thing and say, oh, you know what? We forgot the speaker. Not at all their intention. They intentionally withheld things like speakers and things like SD cards as a way to make you buy more things, subscriptions to Audible and cloud storage and alternative subscriptions in order to increase your size. Whereas something like this, you'll get speakers and SD cards and all sorts of high spec 8 gigs RAM and 256 gig storage available on certain units. Onyx has not quite reached that echelon just yet, but when it comes down to it, if you want something that is more simple you would get something like a Linux device because if you are a beginner it would be easier to just jump into something like this because it's very simple it's very easy things are very intuitive if you want something more technical something that they leave you to your own devices you buy this and you say well, well I don't know what Evernote is and you Dow and Dropbox I don't even have a Dropbox do I sign up with them do I pay them what's Google Drive oh is that my Gmail there's so much more that needs explaining on this there's very little hand-holding on an Android device and a lot of you guys might be seeing this and being like well Android's really easy cool if it is easy for you then that is awesome I personally think Android is very easy that's because I've been surrounded by it for nearly two decades however on a Linux device, I find it to be, by comparison, overly simplistic because that's it. There's nothing I can do to change anything. It's just right here set for me and I'll just say, well, you know, I guess I'll just click on this book and that's it. And that's where it ends. That's the whole reason of its existence. Whereas on here, I can get carried away. I can download the latest asphalt game. I can crank up the volume. I can change it into X mode and super fast and top speed if I have a high read. And I can just burn through my social media and doom scroll till the cows come home because that's what this can do. And these are what this can't do. Hope that opens your guys' eyes and gives you a little bit more insight into something like an Android device versus something like a Linux device. See you on the next one.